welcome back to the Calm and Connected podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and today I want to talk about using senses to help kids manage their feelings. So at Coping Skills for Kids, I talk about the five styles of coping. So there's relaxation, distraction, movement, processing, and sensory. So I wanted to focus today on sensory. If you are interested in hearing about some of the other kinds of styles of coping, I've actually recorded a few different podcasts about um, that. So I have one podcast episode. It's one of my earliest podcast episodes, episode four, I think, about the five coping styles and just reviewing what those five coping styles are and some examples of each. There's also the power of movement. And so that's really talking about how you can use movement to deal with your emotions. I believe that's episode 25. Um, There's one about the benefits of distraction coping skills, all about play and using activities to help kids with their emotions. That's number 73. And then there's also... Uh, several podcasts about taking deep breaths. One of my favorites is using three props to take deep breaths, and that's number 45. So for those of you who may have been following me for a while, you may have noticed when I first made the coping skills checklist, I put movement and sensory together. They were in the same sort of category, but over time I realized it made sense to separate it out into two different categories. One of the reasons is that we have been seeing a lot more sensory processing uh issues have come up with some of the clients that I've been seeing. Um, And I noticed that those kids who have sensory challenges really respond well to sensory coping skills. So I wanted to make sure that I recognize that and acknowledge that and try to make a space for that in the coping styles that I've seen over the years and I've worked with over the years. So, you know, coping using sensory is really focused on using senses to help kids deal with their big emotions. And when I talk about senses, I think about, you know, the five major senses that we all know, but then I also think about proprioception, which is a fancy way of saying body position and movement, and vestibular, which is all about balance. So just a quick caveat here. I want you to know that I am not trained as an occupational therapist. That is not my background. That is not my knowledge or expertise. And so when I talk about sensory coping styles and when I talk about sensory coping skills, I am thoughtful when I use them with kids because I just like with all coping styles what works depends on the child so if you are working with a child who has a sensory processing disorder or sensory processing issues and they are also seeing an occupational therapist I would highly recommend checking in with that occupational therapist especially if you're working in a school system those occupational therapists are brilliant they know what was going to be calming for a child who has sensory processing issues and what is going to be more um, overstimulating for a child with sensory processing issues. So you want to make sure that you are checking in with your OT. If for whatever reason you don't have an OT, then the next best thing to do is check in with the child before and after to see how they're feeling. So before you start a strategy, check in, how is their body feeling? What what are they feeling right then? And then afterwards, check in. Do they feel calmer? Do they feel more heightened? And then you use your senses and you use your uh, brilliance and look and see how they are reacting. Are they reacting in a in a calmer way? Are they reacting or if they, are they overstimulated at this point? So that's just something to keep in mind if you are working with a child and you are working on sensory coping strategies and you um, are not really quite sure how it's going to go. I always feel like that's kind of how it is with every coping strategy that you try, try with a kid. Like you never know how they're going to react. You never know what's going to work and what's not going to work. And it's just something to be extra careful of when you're working with a child who has sensory processing issues. So if you are interested in learning more about sensory processing, there's a couple of resources I want to point you towards. So one of the big books that I always recommend and is one of the most well-known books is Raising a Sensory Smart child by Lindsay Beale and Nancy Pesky. 
And you can go to sensorysmarts.com and learn more about the book. I think Lindsay does speaking. Um, So really good information about just helping you understand what it means to raise a kid with sensory processing disorder um, or sensory processing issues. And then if you want more playful ideas that incorporate the senses, I would check out the Inspired Treehouse. It's run by two amazing women, Claire and Lauren, and it has easily digestible articles all about sensory processing and activities you can do at home and at school using their bodies, using movement, all sorts of fun stuff for kids to work through and, you know, working on their different senses as they are working through in a fun and playful way. So I would absolutely highly recommend theinspiredtreehouse.com. So I want to just take a few minutes after just explaining a little bit more about the style of coping of sensory, I wanted to just highlight seven different kinds of coping skills within this um, sensory coping style that I really like to use. So let's talk about touch. One of the first um, things that I really like to talk about when I'm using the sensory skill um, is talking about touch. So having a child feel a smooth stone in their hand, taking a moment and describing how it feels sitting with that feeling and it can really lead to some mindful moments as well I remember I was working with a child a teenager actually who had just come out of the hospital she was going back into her high school and she was really really worried so one thing that we did was I gave her a stone a little worry stone that she could keep in her pocket it was pretty flat um, so it wasn't you know a big bulge that would look kind of weird but it was something that she knew was in her pocket that she could keep there and she could hold it and touch it when she needed to just be a little bit more relaxed. And so she said that really did help her. It was one of the things that helped her get through those first early days of going back to school, which feel really weird. Um, The sense of smell. Now, I love using a sense of smell. I'm a type of person, I really like using, you know, lavender essential oils. I really love smelling clementines. I love the smell of lilacs. I'm a very sensory focused person, especially when it comes to my the, my sense of smell. Um, and so one of the things that I have um, said and tried and recommended with people is, you know, having kids be able to use some calming scents like lavender or vanilla in a sand tray or smelling a fresh berry or identifying smells in nature. There are two things that you just need to be thoughtful of. So first is you need to be thoughtful of allergens. You need to be careful about kids who might be allergic to things. Are they allergic to citrus? It happens. Are they allergic to another another scent that's in there? So you want to make sure that they're, first of all, not allergic to it. And second of all, it hasn't been associated with some traumatizing event. So you don't, you don't necessarily know that. Um, but sometimes kids, if they have experienced some trauma, they have that uh, sense memory of a smell that was happening at the same time. So you just want to be thoughtful about that and careful about that when you're working with children. Visually, things that you can do in terms of helping kids manage their big emotions, you can have them identify colors in the room. You know, I see a blue box. I see a blue robe. I see a blue window screen, all of those things that kids can start to do. They can start to look around and tell you all that you pick a particular color and they can tell you all the things that are that color in the room. Or you can just have them identify objects in the room. I see the books. I see the coffee. I see the bananagrams. So be able to tell you what's in the room. So just using their sense of sight to be able to help them relax taste, having them taste a warm cup of soup or a cup of tea or a cup of hot cocoa. And that can just kind of naturally lead into deep breathing because I love the deep breathing strategy of smell the hot cocoa and cool the hot cocoa or smell the soup, cool the soup or smell the tea and cool the tea. And so it automatically brings in that natural way of teaching deep breathing as well. But there's something that can be very soothing about having something warm like tea or cocoa or a warm soup. 
auditory. Kids can listen and tell you what they hear. Um, they can listen for things outside of the room, listen for things inside of the room, and listen to their own bodies and share with you what those things are. So that's a thing that I have actually done a lot during presentations, and it's always really interesting to see how the adults react to it, because usually people will hear things they hadn't heard before, um, or they'll notice things that they hadn't noticed, which I think is always really interesting. And we always do it as a sort of mindfulness exercise, but it can also fall into this category of sensory. And then in terms of proprioception, and that's again, body position and movement. So Stacking and carrying heavy books, having kids stack and carry books um, in their arms or having them be in a backpack and so they're walking around with those uh, books on their back, just giving them a little bit of movement in their bodies. I love being able to have kids do that. And then vestibular, which is all about balance. So for this strategy, I really think about um, having kids um, turn upside down. So my son used to be that type of child who would turn upside down to watch TV, to read books, to um, do pretty much anything, just have conversations. He just basically at one point in his life lived upside down on our couch. And that helped him calm down. And that worked for him. And so it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and he came to that naturally. I didn't have him do that. I didn't encourage him to do that. He just figured it out one day and he was like, this feels great. I really love this. And so he would often then come in and turn himself upside down and then do what he wanted to do um, in terms of interacting with a book or interacting with a TV show or a movie. So... I just wanted to share some sensory resources that we've been creating over at Coping Skills for Kids that I think that might be of interest to you. So the first is the Coping Skills um, Coping Cue Cards, and that's um, the Coping Cue Card deck, and that has 40 coping strategies that are all based on the sensory coping style, and that's available right now. And it is different from the ones that are in the discovery deck. So the discovery deck is like a very quick introduction to all the coping styles. Um, and it has eight sensory strategies in there. But these from the sensory deck is really only focused on sensory. So it has 40 other strategies, beautifully illustrated cards. And then I am so pumped to be able to share with you that I actually just finished up this sensational sensory activity book. So in this activity book, it focuses on 30 different um, strategies that are based on sensory. And there are three different ways that kids can interact with this style and these different individual coping skills. So they can draw about it, they can write about it, and they can color about it. And my favorite thing about this book is there is a check-in about feelings before and after on every single page. And so a child can say, I want to check in, I want to work on managing this emotion or I'm feeling this way right now and so they have a few choices and then there's always an extra one if so if the one that they are feeling isn't in there they can add it in and then at the bottom after it's all done they can also check in again how do they feel now do they feel calmer do they feel more relaxed do they feel a little bit more silly whatever it is they can and put that in at the bottom of each of the um, pages on the sensory book. So there's also, again, a little space if, if their feeling isn't included in that bottom one, which is going to happen, there's a space that they can write in their own feelings. So it's available for download right now. And by the time this podcast airs, the print book should be available for shipping. So if you want to go check it out at the store, you can head over to store.copingskillsforkids.com. And if you want to get both the book and the card deck, right now there is an automatic discount that's um, applied. If you put both of them into your cart, you get $5 off. So that's pretty great. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. I hope I gave you some ideas for coping with your senses, using your senses to cope with big, difficult feelings and big, difficult challenges. And I wanted to say thank you for tuning into the podcast. If you like this podcast, please feel free to rate it and review it and share it with your colleagues. And I hope you found it enjoyable. And as always, don't forget about yourself. Take a few minutes, have a little fun and have an awesome day. Bye.